Hey guys, it's Cam from Craft and Tailored. In this episode of What Is On My Wrist, we are talking about a Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms military issued 3H Bund that is really interesting. Uh, so this watch is a basically a military issued diver. It was issued to the German Kampf swimmers. Uh, in the later part of the 1970s, and it's got some interesting features that make it unique outside of the other Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms that we've had here on our channel, as well as in our online shop. So let's talk about this guy. It's really, really interesting watch and uh, definitely worthy of some time on the wrist. So obviously Blanc Pond watches have a pretty storied history when it comes to military issuance and watches that have been uh, you know, issued to the military divers. Um, and we can go into the Tornik Revel references and the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms and uh, et cetera, et cetera. We actually have another video um, that we can post that talks about uh, Blanc Ponds and all that kind of stuff. And I'll provide a link in the description below so you can check that out to learn a little bit more about the 50 Fathoms history in itself. So in the later part of the 1970s, especially with military diving applications, closed circuit uh, or rebreathers became kind of the standard in the, in the norm. Um, in open circuit diving apparatuses, you have bubbles that are exhaled as you breathe in the compressed gas from your tank, and then you exhale that gas out into the environment underwater. Uh, but in covert operations, obviously one could look for bubbles and then determine whether or not if there was a diver below. Um, one other thing that's interesting about the open circuit uh, diving is that you have a limited air supply. With closed circuit or rebreathers, um, two things. One, you don't have any uh, exhalation of bubbles because essentially you're recycling that gas and then scrubbing it. Um, but also you have extended bottom time because you're not limited to uh, an open circuit. You're not using that gas and then exhaling it. You're actually recycling the gas. So the reason why that's important when talking about the 3H Blanc Pond is because um, one, that technology was allowing uh, our military divers to stay underwater for extended periods of time. And you'll see that actually in the design details of this watch. Um, the other thing too, is that um, we weren't timing bottom time anymore uh, in terms of minutes or air supply. You're actually timing hours, which is, is, is really interesting. So um, there's a couple unique design features that we'll get into in this watch specifically that kind of cater to uh, the closed circuit diving apparatus or rebreathers as opposed to watches that were geared more towards open circuit diving. If we fast forward to 1975, the German military required a watch for its Navy combat divers to be more precise um, in terms of uh, timing, uh, uh, extended periods of bottom time and also increased depth rating. So um, the three H50 fathoms kind of came as a result of that, that requirement. Um, one thing that's really interesting about this watch is that, um, again, we were kind of talking about this before, the bezel or acrylic bezel is really interesting because we can call this kind of like a sterile bezel, meaning that there isn't any grad graduations around to, to track minutes. We basically have this black sterile bezel and then we ultimately have a loomed triangle at the 12 o'clock position that could be used to then time hours or minutes um, and uh, you know of, of bottom time. Um, I say hours and minutes because uh, what's really interesting about this watch if we pull the crown out and let me just open up the hands really quick here. Um, you'll see that the minutes hand is actually highlighted in an orange color, so high visibility orange. And then the hour hand is actually in high visibility white. So you could actually track both minutes and hours uh, with the rotating bezel. Um, another interesting thing about this uh, case design for Blanc Pond is it's actually a Squale Von Buren style case, meaning that instead of the traditional Blanc Pond type of dive watch where the crown is located um, at the three o'clock position on, on the dial, um, this watch actually has the, the crown located at the four o'clock or closer to the five o'clock position, um, which makes it more comfortable when on the wrist. The overall build quality of the watch is very much tank-like, but it's also very robust. So it's kind of nice that this watch um, ultimately, you know, will, won't dig into the top of your wrist uh, when it's, you know, on, on the wrist. And it's very similar to the, to the current um, 
1521 Squales, which I'm a huge fan of. So Squale watches um, are really, really interesting and have a story history of their own, but this is very much Squale-esque in terms of its overall design and kind of form factor even today. You can you know, buy a Squale with the offset crown and this kind of sterile bezel with you know, an orange mint hand, which is pretty cool. So check those watches out. What's interesting um, too, is this watch has a 1000 meter depth rating, which is really interesting. So we've got a really thick case, um, a sapphire crystal or mineral glass crystal probably because it's 75. Uh, so um, mineral glass crystals were used a lot back in that era in time. So increased depth rating um, for this watch uh, as a result of it being overbuilt and leveraging some technology like the mineral glass and a thicker case to uh, yield a higher depth rating. The watch itself is, is powered by uh, an automatic Ravel 2873 movement. Um, and that's kind of interesting too because it's really not that impressive. It's kind of more of a utilitarian movement. The nice thing about this, the, the Ravel movement is that it does have a quick set date feature, which is nice and it is, uh, you know, it's a winding movement. So you can wind and, and power the watch to load up the mainspring and it does have a quick set date function, um, which is kind of interesting for a military diver. Uh, but again, the, the movement itself isn't really anything that all impressive. It's something that can be serviced and kind of worked on easily, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, another interesting design feature is that the watch does have uh, fixed spring bars. So uh, in typical military watch fashion, we don't have spring bars that are removable. That's a safety feature. So for example, most of these watches would have been worn off of a bracelet and on a strap. They actually came from the factory with these fixed spring bars. So uh, what's interesting about that, for example, if you have a spring bar that has come dislodged, uh, the watch will actually stay on on the wrist like this, right? So that was a, a feature that uh, most militaries required. Uh, you can see that in British military, uh, like the mill subs, for example, they all have fixed spring bars, which this this has. Um, additionally, you'll see uh, the Bundwasser uh, serial number as well as the reference number. So the military issuance uh, inventory number is actually engraved in the case back on this watch, similar to like a mill sub or any other kind of military diver did have a military uh, inventory number. Um, and that is actually engraved on, on onto the back. So the reason why there's a 3H on this dial is um, this is a non-radioactive watch and the way that the military designated watches, especially in the German military, uh, to not emit any type of radioactivity or a very low amount of radioactivity is 3H. 3H is hydrogen three, which is the chemical designation for tritium. So this is a tritium uh, loomed watch that would emit a very, very minute, almost untraceable amount of uh, radioactivity for the luminous material. The reason why that's really important and the reason why you see 3H on uh, not only um, dive watches or other watches that were used, especially and more specifically in the, in the German Navy, but uh, in, in a lot of the, the, the navies is that um, part of it is actually for nuclear submarines. So a lot of the, the comp swimmers and combat divers and things like that had to uh, work around nuclear submarines and there was uh, radioactive testing happening all the time. So if you had a highly radioactive watch, it would actually trip the sensors out. Um, and so that's why um, you see a 3H on the watch. Also just due to chemical regulations, I believe with the military, things that were non-radioactive or that possessed a really low radioactive um, uh, energy um, were often classified as such, so that's why you see the 3H. So really interesting Blanc Pond, really interesting military watch. I really like this watch a lot. Um, the case is, is pretty beefy. Um, uh, the case is pretty beefy. It's 42 millimeters and I believe it is about 14 millimeters thick. I don't have a set of calipers here with me, but um, knowing these watches like I know them, I believe this is about 14 to 16 millimeters thick based on my uh, watch idiot savant knowledge. So being that it is a overbuilt military dive watch, it doesn't wear um, too obscenely oversized on the wrist, it wears quite nicely. But uh, with that being said, it definitely is a, a rugged tool watch. There is some heft and, and you know some weight to the, the watch for sure. Um, so really interesting watch. I really love the condition of this. In typical you know Blanc Pond fashion, the uh, marker at the uh, 12 o'clock uh, position on the bezel is cracked. Most of these 3H buns have that issue, but the case remains in pretty good shape. It does show some battle scars, but the reference numbers um, on of 1438 are, are 
visible and the serial numbers are visible and it's a pretty good example. So I uh, figured I would talk about it and, and uh, provide you guys with some info on it. So I'll provide a link in the description below so that you can check this out and learn more about it. Uh, as always guys, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for tuning in, see you later.